Hi guys, right, uh, just an update on what's been going on. Um, I have mounted the uh, valves and fittings to the radiators upstairs and those radiators have been uh, fitted onto the wall. Um, I can't get into the loft upstairs obviously to, to run the pipework round. It is, you know, it's 130, 140 degrees in the loft in this really hot weather we've got. So that's going to have to wait. Um, but the, uh, the radiators are on the wall and the fittings are also on the wall uh, with the rads. Now I have made a mistake. I, as you recall, I decided to go for the straight through TRVs and uh, uh, these valves as well. And that was fine for upstairs because I was going out through, through the wall uh, into the loft space for the pipework. Uh, downstairs here, of course, we're going down and through uh, the wooden floor uh, mostly. Um, so, given the fact that I've picked pretty much the biggest radiators that we can get, um, I really needed the 90 degree versions of the TLVs and these. So, I'm hoping we can go back and swap those. Uh, at the moment, I've fitted uh, all of the radiators to the wall without the uh, valves and fittings and things. I just wanted to get something done uh, this week uh, and then we're going to have to pop down and see about getting the, uh, the actual valves and things uh, swapped over. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mistake there. Hopefully they'll take them back, perhaps for a small <laughs> restocking fee. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just talk about how I fitted the radiators. Upstairs they were on going onto plasterboard and all of them, I was really lucky, but all of them except from one, uh, I could mount the brackets onto uh, wood uh, behind the plasterboard. Uh, the only one that was awkward was one side was in the plasterboard, sorry, one side was in the wood and uh, the other bracket wasn't. So what I did, I just cut a piece of wood put two holes through it, thread some cable through it, uh, went into the loft space, fed the cable through the plasterboard, I'd already pre-drilled that and lined it up with the, uh, the brackets, so I could pull uh, the cable through, that pulled the wood up tight behind the plasterboard and then I managed to screw the bracket straight through the plasterboard and into the wood whilst holding it tight and then I just pushed the, uh, the cable back through the holes to leave the bracket securely on the wall. Um, now I'm lucky here because I know where all the pipe work, where all the mains cables and uh, things like that go. But if you don't, I would certainly recommend you invest in something like this. Uh, this is just a stud finder, but it will also uh, flash up a warning if it finds any uh, AC wires. Uh, in this particular case, the depth can be adjusted. Hopefully you can see that there. We have half inch, one inch, an inch and a half. So depending on what you're uh, going through, uh, then you would set the depth accordingly. And you just basically press the button on the side, hold it against the wall, it will calibrate itself. Uh, it won't now, of course. And, uh, and then it will tell you it will bleep and show you lines as you move over the stud and if it does find names uh, the AC light at the top will flash up. There's plenty of this sort of thing around but if you don't know where the studs are on a plasterboard wall or you're not sure where the pipes and things run get something like that. Now the other thing that's made life really easy is this uh, Black & Decker Laser Plus uh, again, this has a stud uh, detector. I didn't use this one, but I could have done. Um, what I used it for is on the side here, you've got a button and it will emit a infrared sort of laser light. And what you do is you can hold it up against the wall. Hopefully you can see this on film and it will give you a perfectly level line. So anyway, what I did uh, was each radiator I just rested on the floor, pushed it up fairly near the wall 
and then I just marked on the wall where the centre of the bracket is on each one. So I marked the centre there, went down to the other end and just marked the centres of the brackets uh, that are actually welded to the back of the rad. After that, I just measured up uh, the height I wanted. The brackets that go on the wall, you're going to be able to see this very clearly. I'm trying to look in the screen and get this. So you'll see one side is deeper than the other. So if you want the radiator off the wall as much as possible, then you would fit it with this side facing out. So it would go on the wall like that. If you want it closer, then you would have to fit that fit it that way with the wider side actually against the wall. And just bear in mind when you're fitting these, clearly the radiator clips into the top here or here uh, and these are not left and right all you're getting is two of the same thing so they have to be fitted you know like that anyway so once you've marked the centre of each bracket on the wall just measure up the height that you want and bear in mind that the top of the radiator is going to be you know so many inches above this bracket and you can check and measure that uh, by just measuring the, the back of the rad and where the bracket is. Um, but I measured up, I think, I, think so. I, I like these quite high up, I like to be able to see the skirting board underneath and things like that. So I think I drilled uh, the first hole, which and I've used that hole there and the same at the bottom. Of course you could use the slotted um, slots here but I got these absolutely spot on so I decided to use the actual holes. Anyway so let's say you want to start uh, with this hole at 26 inches high just measure up from the carpet go up to 26 inches look at the uh, line that you've already drilled already marked on the wall where the middle of the bracket is and just mark the height and where the bracket is and you'll end up with a cross I've then just drilled through uh, with a 10mm drill and inserted one of the raw plugs and screwed in the uh, bracket just temporarily in that top position. So you end up with the bracket in place and with the top screw or the top bolt put in. Just get your spirit level then and just make sure that that's nice and uh, square like that. After you've done that, just mark the hole or the slot for the next uh, hole. If this is bolted in place, you can of course just swing it out of the way, drill the next hole, put the plug in, swing it back, bolt it up, and job done. What you can do then, or if you want before you've actually once you've drilled that first hole, before bolting this on, you can just pop your laser level on there, get it in the centre of the hole you've just drilled, follow the line across to the mark uh, where the centre of the other side uh, of the radiator's bracket is, and just mark uh, that on the wall. Uh, that way you can be assured you've got a perfectly level radiator. And then, as I say, Bolt that up, bolt that one on there, make sure you've got the slots to the top and then go down the other end and simply repeat the process. And once you've both got them both bolted on, you will just insert the, I call them sort of rattle guards, it's just little bits of plastic that slot into uh, the bracket and it just stops metal on metal contact which probably would you know, make a bit of a rattling noise as things heated up and cooled down. Now on some of the outer walls and upstairs where we've got uh, you know outer plasterboard walls and going into the loft I have used the okay, get it. I have used some aluminium well it's not aluminium well it might be and it's plastic coated I can't tell. This was from eBay it was one of the cheapest ones I could find our budget was uh, going up and up so we had to call it a day on <laughs> how much we uh, spent. This was about five pounds a roll. 
comes with some uh, sticky tabs and all I've done is cut just an inch or two short of the length of the radiator, uh, applied the tabs, the sticky tabs, and popped it onto the walls uh, and then put the brackets on. I've pre-drilled uh, the brackets, put the plugs in, all ready to go, put the reflective foil up and then put the brackets on and then lift the radiator in place. I mean that, if you do it that way, then if the tabs ever become detached for whatever reason, the heat over the years, at least then you've got the brackets actually holding the foil in place at each end. Uh, and if it does do anything, it's going to have a tendency to come unstuck at the corners and sort of curl up. But you should be able to easily reach in there and apply another tab. Uh, you know, if that happens uh, in the years uh, ahead. Um, so yeah, all, all pretty straightforward. Whatever you do, do check the uh, positioning of the pipes, pipe work that might be in the wall, cables, that sort of thing. And also bear in mind your pipe run, the uh, supply, hot water, and the uh, return pipes have all got to be uh, fed out of the, the, the bottom end. Uh, now in this case, I want to come out with a 90 degree valve and straight down through the wooden floor, which we're also going to uh, replace. Upstairs, you'll recall, I was going straight out through this way into the loft space. Uh, so the straight ones have come out and then I've gone through, well I would have done, uh, that's the idea here. Downstairs we've got wooden floors, uh, we've got to replace this hallway floor anyway, so we're going to have all of this up. Same in the uh, front uh, room on the left hand side. Uh, the only difference will be the lounge which is through there, that is a concrete floor. But the radiators are all on this wall. Uh, so we in fact have another radiator directly behind us here. There's one to the right and then one off down the hallway to the left. And with those I'm hoping that, if you imagine we were in the lounge now, I'm hoping to drill, drill down through the concrete at a sort of 45 degree and, and then come out in the floor space below. Now if I can do that uh, then I can be able to feed the pipes down through uh, the lounge floor and straight into the hallway here and connect up uh, to the 22mm plastic. Now because it's really hot, I don't know whether you can see, this is this 15mm pipe. You can actually get quite a nice bend on it. Um, you know, so to go to the radiator and then down through the floor at so, you know, 45, 50 degrees uh, and held in place with clips, I don't think it's going to be an issue. You know, the heat that we're, we've got at the moment is really making this pipe quite flexible. So that is uh, the idea there. Um, as you remember from my other video about the radiators, all of these have been fitted to the wall just so I can get the brackets done. I have not taken these out to the garden to flush them through yet, but I certainly will do when we've got the, the new 90 degree um, uh, valves and things. Uh, don't forget, as I said before, there's a lot of paint left on here and I'm going to clean that all off with uh, uh, a wire brush and a Dremel or in fact on the last three radiators upstairs I scraped that off with a steel rule and then just went over it with uh, a wire brush. Um, so I've got to do that and flush them out. Uh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to cover really today was when you fit the tails and things into radiators, I'll show you that, that is to screw into the bottom there. 15 turns of PTFE tape in a clockwise direction uh, has worked perfectly for me. It sounds like an awful lot uh, and I was quite surprised myself. But I put 15 turns. I've then used some, uh, we can buy the Fernox, I think it's LTX. It's a silicon based sealant that doesn't fully harden. Now the Fernox one is uh, RAS approved so you could use it on uh, you know drinking water connections and that sort of thing. But because this is just for the central heating 
I've used uh, one that we bought from Wix. Same sort of thing, but it's not RAS approved. Um, so I've put 15 winds clockwise around the threads and then just taken a blob of the silica and also just smoothed that round uh, before screwing this in there. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to get a very good permanent seal. The number of turns of PTFE tapes, you know, varies from who you speak to or, you know, what forum you look it up on. Um, but I suspect it's it's quite a lot thinner than it used to be uh, from years ago. And 15 turns seem to be fine. It went this screwed in very easily, no issues at all. Um, it just happened. I was going to show you the. You, I was going to show you me doing that. But uh, all my rolls are out in the workshop and it's so hot out there I didn't bother to go and get it. What I did do was pull out this gas PTFE tape and the difference in thickness is quite unbelievable. <laughs> um, I suspect you don't need as many turns and of course I'm not going to be responsible for uh, installing the gas. We'll have a, a gas safe engineer come out to do that but that is so much thicker um, so I'm not even going to bother to show you how that's done but I don't know what they use I shall find out but uh, if it's more than three or five turns I'd be surprised and why is it so thick I don't know I'm sure we've got some experts out there that can tell me uh, why that needs to be uh, as thick as it is uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is if you are making a compression fitting anywhere you do not need PTFE tape or anything around the pipe or the olive or anything like that. The only place you want some PTFE tape is just around the threads. I know I'm showing you this on the same uh, bit that actually screws into the radiator, but you get the idea. So just a few turns around the threads, and that's purely for lubrication. It's not sealing anything. The actual olive uh, is what seals it. So if you've got a bit of PTFE tape around these threads, you'll find you get a nice smooth, um, well, it's nice and smooth when you actually lock this up, uh, you know, a couple of turns, uh, it's, it's locked up, and uh, you know, another turn, uh, it's, uh, it's sealed. So yeah, PTFE tape on the threads only uh, for lubrication, uh, and again, clockwise. So you're always doing the nut up in the, in the rotation that the tape has been thread on. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Just a couple of tips on um, looking for the anything hidden in the uh, pipework, sorry, in the walls. This is a great tool for leveling. Um, of course, it's, you still need the spirit level for the upright um, leveling of the brackets. Uh, 10 mil drill, um, managed to destroy one of those already, but they're cheap enough. Uh, the bolts and raw plugs obviously came with the radiators as a little pack, so no issues there. Um, the only thing I would say that I noticed, you'll probably recall from my first video, when the radiators were delivered from Mr Central Heating, a couple of the brackets, even though they're protected with a little plastic sort of push-on protectors, the brackets had been bent in transit. Now I checked all of the others and whilst there was no damage obvious to the plastic, once I'd unwrapped all the radiators and uh, pulled the plastic off, most uh, of the brackets had been crushed in towards the radiator. Now initially I was pretty cross about that and I was going to phone up and try and get the whole lot replaced, but I realised quite quickly that even though the bracket on the radiator was crushed in a bit, there was still room to slide the uh, slide that up the back and hook onto the bracket despite it being crushed in a bit. Now I'm not talking if it's <laughs> if it's flattened completely against the radiator, but as long as you've got you know that sort of gap here, then you'll still be able to get the radiator on. So. You know, don't panic too much if the radiator bracket is crushed in a little bit. It's an annoyance. It must happen. I mean, I, I can't believe I'm, I was just unlucky where most of the radiators were damaged in that manner. 
Um, so I guess it's a you know it's a bit of an issue with transporting them, and uh, the plastic cover that's put on the brackets is obviously even needs to be raised up a bit more and more solid so it can't be crushed. And then you imagine if they're stacking these things up and they are heavy. You know, with some of the 1200 ones that we've got here, I could you know you can fit them on your own. It's, you can move them around, but they're quite heavy. There's no getting around um, that. Uh, so I'll, I've got two radiators that can't go on to the walls at the moment because we need a, a little bit of plaster uh, on the walls first. Uh, we've got to change the hall floor. That's completely rotten. We'll be changing that at the same time that we lay the pipework and also one of the front rooms on the left also needs a new floor and we'll tie that in with laying the uh, pipework as well. Um, uh, what else? Oh yes, the FW100 that we bought on eBay. I uh, sent that back. eBay sent a, or, or emailed me a prepaid uh, parcel force label. I posted that back. The seller didn't refund the money within the three days and eBay paid me uh, back themselves. So we've now gone out and bought a brand new FW100. And uh, yes, we paid 180 quid for it. And uh, I'll just uh, show that to you now. There it is. Obviously wrapped. This is the image that was probably taken by that other eBay seller. Um, it's protective covering there and uh, multiple positions. You can screw this in, I think. Obviously the wire comes out the back. This is a data bus arrangement and it is a two wire data bus connection. And to get this apart, you just slide this top off here. And, and then you're struggling a bit. It's not obvious. I was thinking, well, obviously that prizes apart, but actually it doesn't. All you need to do is push down on the bottom and slide it up whilst holding the back like that. That's raised it up and then it just lifts off. So there's the wiring uh, connections there. Uh, again, there's three terminals, but looking at the manual and installation instructions, it does look like it is a two wire bus system uh, only. On the back, you've got, these are very nice actually, these are the terminals that go onto the wired terminals. And if I get this close, you'll see that they're actually nice spring-loaded connections. Now the circuit board looks pretty uh, tiny, and compared to your modern TV, uh, that's got numerous boards, highly complicated, why is this 180 quid? I don't know. <laughs> there is uh, another connection just at the bottom here, and no doubt that is for programming uh, during uh, manufacture. I would, uh, I would guess. Um, so yeah, quick look at that. Put it back. It's exactly the same. You just slide it in at the top and click it down, and that is then all secure again. So just need to pop the top on and that's that done. The other thing it comes with is the outside sensor. Again that's pretty much all it is. That is an outer case and on the back you have an inner uh, IP6, I don't know what's, what's waterproof, IP65, something like that. Um, so it's going to be a waterproof case. You've got a gland to do up on the cable. Again, uh, this is a two wire uh, connection and uh, there's four clips. You can probably see two at the top here and two underneath. You just need to prise those open and lift this uh, unit out and uh, get that installed. Best place appears to be on a north or northeast facing wall and uh, you know up um, to about six to eight foot. But all the specs are in the manuals that you can download from Worcester Bosch. You can download the, uh, the user manual, installation manual, you know, all that sort of stuff. Their website is, uh, is very good indeed. Um, so, yeah, please, we've got that. I'll probably mount that on the wall in the hallway. 
Uh, obviously the hallway radiator will not have a, a TRV on it. Uh, you must have one without anyway in the system and the one in the room uh, where the thermostat goes or the FW100 uh, must give you an, an overall uh, impression of the temperature of the, the building so in our case the hallway will be the ideal uh, area not to have the TRV on the rad and is also the ideal place to fit this. The cabling will simply run underneath uh, the floorboards to the boiler which is as you know is also downstairs. Um, right so yeah I think that's uh, long enough an update. Uh, next stage will be to get these valves swapped over and uh, get the, each radiator flushed out and the valves and hardware all installed. Uh, after that I'm really hoping it will <laughs> cool down uh, to allow me to get up into the loft. It's not going to take long to run the pipes around, it's just the temperature. I, I don't like the heat at the best of times. And uh, yeah, so hopefully it will cool down. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll update you all later on. Hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot.